Hi everyone. In this lab, we're going to talk about bacteria and just give some background on bacteria. And then we're going to focus on two bacterial pathogens that I want everyone in class to know. We're going to talk about the bacteria that causes the disease gonorrhea. So this is Neisseria gonorrhea and the bacterium that causes the disease anthrax. And that is caused by the bacterium Bacillus anthrax. So to start off with some background, bacteria are prokaryotes and they're unicellular organisms, meaning that all bacteria are made up of one cell. And bacteria are also part of the domain bacteria. So remember we learned that there's three domains of life. There's domain bacteria, domain archaea, and domain eukarya. So the group of bacteria is part of the domain bacteria. They are, they come in many different shapes. And when we talk about the shape of bacteria, we use the word morphology. So the two most common shapes that we've been talking about a lot in lab are the caucus shape and the bacillus shape. Caucus just means round. So any bacteria that are caucus shaped are just perfect circles. And any bacteria that are rod shaped, we call them rods. They are also called bacillus, but typically we call them rods. But if you ever see the word bacillus in the name of a bacterium like bacillus subtilis, um, another group of bacillus that we will talk about in this lecture. They are all rod shaped. And then Vibrio, Spirillium, and Spirochete, all these bacteria are a spiral form of bacteria. Vibrio are just curved bacteria, a little bit curved. Spirochetes are very spiral, and then Spirilla are a little bit looser. But mainly I want everyone to know that Caucus is round and Bacillus is rod shaped, or rods are just basically rod shaped. Um, and the shape of bacteria or the morphology is determined by the cell wall. So remember in bacteria, the cell wall is made up of peptidoglycan. So we always have a cell membrane in all cells of all life. And then outside the cell membrane in bacteria, there is a cell wall. So the shape of that cell wall determines what morphology we see, whether it's caucus or rods. And mycoplasma bacteria, just as an outlier, there are bacteria that do not have a cell wall, if you guys remember in lecture you learned about this and so when we look at mycoplasma bacteria their shape is pleomorphic meaning they can come in many different shapes because they don't have a cell wall but for most bacteria we, they have a cell wall and their cell wall determines their morphology. And also keep in mind a few of these prefixes that we use. So when bacteria are seen in chains, we say strepto. So streptococcus bacteria, we see a lot of caucus, a lot of round shaped bacteria in chains. When bacteria are in clusters, we call them staphylococcus. So staphylococcus bacteria, such as staphylococcus epidermis, if you take some of your skin and look at it under the microscope, if you did a gram stain, staphylococcus bacteria, you'd see clusters of caucus shaped bacteria. Okay, now we're going to talk about biofilms. So bacteria can either exist alone by themselves, free living, we call that planktonic, or they can form associations or communities called biofilms. So the definition of a biofilm is a bacterial community. So bacteria are either planktonic, they're in single cells, or they're in biofilms, which are bacterial communities. And these bacterial communities live on surfaces. These surfaces could be a lot or not alive. So a live surface could be like your lung tissue, which would be very bad. That would cause a bad infection. If it, a non-living uh, um, example would be like a table or a cell phone where you see biofilms or communities of bacteria. And in these communities of bacteria or biofilms, the bacteria form them because they're very beneficial for the bacteria. They promote a lot of nutrient entry and they also protect bacteria from a lot of things. So in biofilms, bacteria form this slime layer and this slime layer among the bacterial community protects them from your immune system. So harmful white blood cells, antibiotics, disinfectants, if we're thinking about surfaces. So with biofilms, they are a big medical problem because when you have someone, they can have an infection and that infection can either be like a regular infection or it can be a biofilm infection. So if you think if you have a biofilm on like kidney tissue or anything like that, you have 
this protective layer around the bacteria. So even when a person's immune system and their white blood cells are trying to attack it, it's not really working. And it's very hard for antibiotics to kill such a big group of bacteria in this community. So it is a big medical concern. Now, if we're going to talk about different nutritional pathways that bacteria can have. So bacteria can have different ways that they can get their energy and their carbon source. And we classify these organisms based on whether they get their energy from the sun or from carbon dioxide or organic matter or inorganic matter, and whether they get their carbon from carbon dioxide or organic matter. So photoautotrophs are bacteria that get their energy from the sun. Anytime you see the term photo, it means they get their energy from the sun, and they're autotrophic, meaning they get their energy from carbon dioxide. Photoheterotrophs get their energy from the sun, and they get their carbon source from organic matter. So all living things need a carbon source. Chemolithoautotrophs get their energy from an inorganic matter and they get their carbon source from carbon dioxide. And then chemoorganoheterotrophs, which sometimes people just call heterotrophs, get both their energy and their carbon source from organic matter. And I want the main thing I want everyone to know is that chemoorganoheterotrophs, or what we typically just call heterotrophs, are organisms that basically need to be provided organic matter for energy and carbon. And most medically important bacteria that basically cause infections, pathogens, are heterotrophs or chemoorganoheterotrophs that get both their energy source and their carbon source from us, the host. So we've been talking about biofilms and how these things are not good, so they're detrimental aspects of bacteria, but there are a lot of important things that bacteria do for us. So examples of bacterial importance is bioremediation. Bioremediation means that bacteria help break down and decompose certain things, so that can be organic matter or toxic waste, oil, examples of things in the environment that bacteria break down for us. Another good thing that bacteria do for us is they make really good food. So we see yogurt is made by bacteria, different types of just different types of food, sauerkraut, all these things bacteria play a big role in. And then biotechnology, we use bacteria to create different substances, pharmaceutical substances. For example, insulin is made by bacteria. So bacteria are very beneficial in a lot of ways. And finally, a very important aspect of bacteria is they play a big role in the human microbiome or human microbiota. So when we use the word microbiome or microbiota, they mean the same thing. And it's basically trillions and trillions of bacteria that inhabit our body. And these bacteria that inhabit different parts of our body, such as our skin, our intestines, different parts, they help digest food for us and protect us by covering our spots that would otherwise potentially be covered by pathogenic bacteria. And the microbiome, the more that people are studying it, the more that they're learning can have effects on your mood. So they've learned that some bacteria can affect whether you're more depressed or more anxious. Some bacteria can also play a role in your weight. So a lot of different things. So from this slide, I want everyone to know that the four beneficial aspects of bacteria is bioremediation, food production, biotechnology, and then the human microbiota, which is a big field of microbiology right now. So these were good things that we talked about. Now we're going to focus on bacterial pathogens, which is what this lab is about. So remember, a pathogen is anything that causes disease. So bacteria can be bad because they can be pathogenic, and they also can be bad because they can cause food to spoil. So in this lab, the goal was for you guys to look at slides of bacteria. So if you were in lab, you were going to look at slides of two pathogens that we're going to discuss, Neisseria and Bacillus anthrax. And both of these cause very very bad diseases that are somewhat common. So we'll talk about both. Okay, I'm going to start off with Neisseria gonorrhea. This is a bacterium and it causes the disease gonorrhea, which a lot of people have heard of. When we look at this 
bacterium under the microscope and bacterium means one bacteria means a lot of bacteria so bacteria is plural bacterium is singular when we look at this bacteria under the microscope we see that they're gram negative meaning that when you stain them they're red and they're a diplococcus shape meaning that we see circles and they're in pairs so this is a big indication that someone has an Neisseria gonorrhea infection so if someone comes to you with symptoms of pus discharge, painful urination, painful penis, testes, vaginal discharge, any of these symptoms, mainly pus discharge, you may assume that they have the sexually transmitted infection gonorrhea and you would send that sample to lab and when you do if they do a gram stain on it they would see that the cells are gram negative and diplococcus and so here is a picture from a urethral sample and then when we look at these images these microscopic images we see that the bacteria are the little tiny red circles in degenerating white blood cells so we see that these white blood cells are just um, degenerating means that they're kind of just falling apart and this disease is transmitted sexually so this bacteria you can get it sexually and babies born to infected mothers can also have a disease called ophthalma neonatarium where the baby has a very bad eye infection which can cause a lot of complications treatment whether it's um, for the baby or for sexually transmitted infection is antibiotics. Everyone has to get antibiotics that could potentially have had sex with someone that had Neisseria gonorrhea. And the prevention is abstinence. There really isn't a prevention. There isn't a vaccine right now for this. So here is an image of a baby and here is in female and in male infection. So I just wanted to show these images and that this bacterium is very prominent right now. So gonorrhea is a very prominent sexually transmitted infection. The other bacteria that you would have looked like uh, looked at in lab is Bacillus anthrax, and this bacterium causes the disease anthrax or inhalational anthrax. This is basically a very bad lung infection. So if you were to take a sample from someone who potentially has this infection and you do a gram stain in lab, these bacteria are gram positive, meaning they stain purple and they're rod shaped. So you see these nice rod shaped bacteria that are gram positive. The symptoms of this is flu-like symptoms, difficulty breathing, lots of chest pain with this disease. It's not very common and infected individuals can go into shock and usually die within 36 hours of exposure. So this is a very bad bacterium that causes, um, that produces endospores and it's breathing in endospores that's really bad. And remember, endospores are very hard to treat. So this is has been used in bioterrorism before, unfortunately. So the transmission is ingestion or inhalation. So breathing in the bacterial endospores or the bacteria. Treatment is antibiotics and aggressive supportive care, meaning making sure that the person can breathe, having very good um, oxygen for the patient. And prevention, there is, we do have a vaccine for it, but only high risk people take it, such as military personnel, because this is not very common. So here is an image of, this is a lung sample. And again, these bacteria are rod shaped and they're gram positive, so they're purple. So this is what they look like. And if we look at an x-ray of a normal individual's chest versus inhalational anthrax, we see that the person has a very bad inflammation. And the inflammation is from your immune system really trying to fight off that infection. And it's the inflammation that makes it very hard to breathe. So from this bacteria lab, I want everyone to just understand what bacterial morphologies were. So we talked about caucus shapes, rod shapes, what these terms mean. What are biofilms? We talked about biofilms being bacterial communities and that they're important for bacteria because they help bacteria protect each other. They are a medical concern because they're very hard to treat, whether that's your own immune system trying to target that infection or antibiotics. Then we talked about the microbiome. 
beneficial and detrimental aspects of bacteria. So we talked about benefits such as bioremediation, biotechnology, food production, the human microbiome, and detrimental aspects such as food spoilage and pathogens. And then I want everyone to know what nutritional group medically important bacteria fall under. Remember, most bacterial infections are chemo organo heterotrophs or just heterotrophs. They get all their energy and carbon source from us, the host. And then know what Neisseria gonorrhea and Bacillus anthrax look like under the microscope. Remember, Neisseria gonorrhea is gram negative, so it's spread, and they were diplococcus shaped, and Bacillus anthrax were rod shaped, and they were gram positive or purple if you did a gram stain. So go through everything I talked about the name of the disease that these bacteria cause, the etiology, so the cause of the disease, so whether they're raw shaped or caucus shaped, symptoms, unique symptoms, when we compare Neisseria gonorrhea and Bacillus anthrax, mode of transmission, which one is a sexually transmitted infection, which one is breathing in bacterial endospores, and then prevention. So uh, is there a vaccine for it? How do we stop it? So just go through all that stuff and please really try to understand the slide images.